1080 The Team presents ESPN 1080.com Insider Show here on this Sunday, August 21st, the four-month anniversary of this show. And I am proud to be joined by the guys who have pretty much have, uh, enjoyed the ride here for four months. We got Andrew Melnick, your NBA Magic Locked Out Insider, which means were you in the Kim Kardashian wedding since Chris wow. Humphries was there, uh, there in uh, beautiful Malibu there, Andrew? I was the best man. Congrats. That's the beauty of being an insider, right? Best you get man or next man? Oh, sorry. Wow. You can that. catch him on uh, e, ne e Network on October 9th, I think, is when they're airing the live portion of the wedding. Oh, so there you go. I'm really embarrassed that you know that question. I, uh, <laughs> that, that is a little embarrassing, out. actually. Uh, but not embarrassed is Mr. MLB and Rays insider Jason Cullen. Yeah, it's tough to be embarrassed when the Rays are 14-6 and six in their last 20. Bam! They're trying to like, keep that playoff open. Eye. That's huh? absolutely irrelevant. No, that's relevant. How's that taste, Melnick, huh? Uh, Red Sox fan. Okay, I guess. <laughs> He's real concerned about it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're way back And there. then, of course, so Carson Engel, who missed, uh, you didn't get the invite to go to Kim Kardashian's wedding? No, I got to catch up with two former great knights uh, last night, Chris Duffy and Ryan Bass. So who? I'm okay. Who? Chris Duffy. Chris Duffy. Duffy. You love Chris Duffy. Don't, don't, don't who? talk. You Chris know what him all and, Conference well, USA. Well, that's true. You know what him and Tim Tebow have uh, in common? Oh, no. Come uh, on. Not a, lot, not a, not a long-term uh, pro career. Oh, Bam! that's not oh. Yeah, but one of them was Golden Spikes uh, that, uh, uh, finalist, and one wasn't. That's true, and that Look was Chris. This guy. All right, you're right. Tim, I, I, you're right. I'm, you're right. Chris Duffy has a better Chris career Duffy, ahead than Tim Tebow. Duffy, you're right, Jason. What has right. Chris Duffy ever done to you? No, I just apologize. Chris Duffy's okay. got a better career than Tim Tebow ahead of him. I agree. Last week, you Eric was uh, complimenting everyone, guy, so he's going to tear them all down. The guy, now it's the hammer. The guy, hammer puts, on, the guy puts on a Chris Winky jersey. It's a beautiful you know, thing. A Buckman, person. by the way, our fine producer, we cannot uh, be dismissed, is joining us as well once again. Buckman, welcome. Thanks again, Lopez. It's uh, always a pleasure being with you guys. It's always a pleasure that you're joining us. That's the, the beauty of it all. Yeah. Coming up on the show, we have our Florida State Seminole preview, Andrew. You fired up, Andrew? I'm real fired up. Now he wakes up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I would wake him up. We'll be joined by Brandon Miller, the Doke Insider for Seminoles.com. We'll preview the Seminole season coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about as well. We have a fan and we have a, a that's going to call in and ask Jason a raised question. He's his, you're his favorite insider, Jason. Sweet. You'll enjoy that towards the end the of the club. show. And, uh, of course, you can check us out, of course, at ESPN1080.com with all the articles are up there. I got my wide receivers preview for UCF, which you could also check in that story, our Insiders Top 25 poll, Andrew. Yeah, you can. Uh, we've had that up for a couple weeks, so you should have already looked at it. But if you're not, you can look again. Are we going to update that during the season, like a real poll, or is that just like a preseason thing? Uh, I, I think we're going to be updating it every week. All right, sounds good. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, that's the beauty there. And, uh, we, of course, we will unveil the, what is it? We're up to 15 to 10 we're going to unveil today, right? 15 to 10. Oh, or you well, want to stretch out the we might, we might do a little extra. We've only got you, two weeks. Ooh, bonus, baby, bonus. Uh, maybe we'll give you up to about seven or eight. Wow. I like that. I like that. All right, so let's get into it, boys. First, of course, the big topic this week, the scandal that is college athletics. The University of Miami, big scandal, Yahoo story, 72 players involved, prostitution, abortion, money, payments, bounties on Chris Ricks! How dare you! Movie script should be... I'm waiting for the movie. Whoever's going to buy the movie rights, it should be pretty awesome uh, for that. I mean, to me, if, if you haven't learned by now, if Yahoo Sports come knocking on your door, it's like the IRS showing up on your front doorstep. You're in trouble. Uh, they have done some pretty darn impressive investigative writing uh, here and pretty much everywhere else. And, you know, th this is kind of like the dirty secret of college sports. Uh, you know, we're kind of foolish if we don't think everybody's kind of doing this in some capacity. But this is a little extreme. Oh, this is pretty darn extreme. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe this, maybe this Yahoo investigation will be like the Mitchell Report of baseball Ooh. or the Conseco book about steroids. You know, something that every, everybody knew that was happening, but they kind of turned the other way. Now you have Ohio State, you've had USC, now you've got Miami, now you've got you know Auburn. You've got all these other big schools in the last 12 to 18 months coming up with their problems. Maybe this will finally get some attention and you know try to address what's becoming an epidemic in the sports that people just keep ignoring and, and kicking down the can until somebody gets caught what i want to know is who put the bounty on chris Briggs. that's what i want to i understand i understand the <laughs> I, think you did. Bounty. I think you did as fsu <laughs> yeah, fan i think the state fans might have put that bounty out that's a good point 
I understand the Tim Tebow bounty. You know, you take him out, you might beat that. Yeah, team. if you're a UM, wouldn't you want it? Chris Ricks you to stay Chris, on the field? You take Chris Ricks yeah. out, you're probably going down. Yeah. It's, uh, what's your thoughts, Andrew, on the whole situation? Um, you can't say, I don't think anyone can say they're surprised. But just some of the allegations, I mean, the stripper abortion, that, that's got to bother everyone. That's an understatement, <laughs> if I ever heard there, Carson, your thoughts Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, obviously for stuff like that, the extremity that this case take, took, I think that there's some penalties that Miami needs to take. Now, overall, I think that people are sort of taking a, a ridiculous, high and mighty moral stance with this. Yeah, how dare we play by rules? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think that, that the NCAA... When you say that, though, what do you mean? Like, what, well, do you, what, do you, what would you like? I, I would like the NCAA to deregulate some of this ridiculousness. Now, obviously, stuff that's against U.S. law, I mean, that has to be... <laughs> That has to be yeah. taken and uh, you know, account thing. for. And yeah. so there, there are things in this Miami case that maybe weren't prevalent in the Ohio State case or the USC case right. or the North Carolina case recently that, that really should be uh, taken and, and something should be done about. But uh, some of the stuff I, I think is just kind of silly in terms of what the NCAA looks at. I, mean, I, tell you, I uh, saw a good article this morning uh, from Kevin Skarbinski uh, from the Birmingham News. He recommended having you know in, uh, independent compliance directors because the compliance directors, all these schools, work for the school. So you're you know you're in a you know a catch twenty two. Do you rat on your own school because uh, they're they're your employer uh, and these guys are paid pretty well. You look at us looking at some of the salaries. These guys at Alabama Auburn make one hundred and twenty thousand plus a year as a compliance director. But at the same time, you know, if they rat their own school out, maybe they lose their job. At, at sure. that. So you know, independent uh, compliance directors might be the next step here. And that way, uh, you have to go by, check it out. No, we can't do that. Maybe that uh, at least is a step in the right direction because right now, clearly, this process is not working. And this whole garbage with Terrell Pryor getting suspended by the NFL, that's not working either. I, I like that, and I'm wondering, uh, you know, how much UCS compliance officer makes. I don't think it's 120 thousand. No, and uh, UCF also is getting investigated. Uh -huh. uh, that's the other story. I mean, everybody uh, is getting investigated. It seems you got Oregon, Ohio State, UCF. Is college athletics LSU? Uh, LSU is there? In, are they in chaos? I mean, is college athletics? I think is on the I, I, are on the verge of kind of self destructing. Well, this process is not working. You've already heard right. rumors about you know people talking about breaking away from the NCAA so they can have this whole you know sure. all these things here and just let them do it. Uh, you know, I don't like that. I like the the amateurism of college sports. Right. Yeah, I'd like to believe that everybody's on the up and up, but you know, obviously they're not uh, with that. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. They got to do something. The whole the Terrell Pryor getting suspended by the NFL. I don't really care for that because if you're talking about the integrity. Of the game, the whole process there, I kind of laugh when the NFL does that. But if you look at, you know, Terrell Pryor should never have been able to play in that Ch Sugar Bowl. I think they were playing. Oh, that in. was absurd. You know, that kind of thing. That but was if, absurd. You, if you can tell these the guys, guys, it cost yeah. them a little more in the NFL. But I mean, let's let's be honest. Let's say a first overall draft pick is in the same boat as Terrell Pryor was. You know, is an NFL team really going to let this guy slide down if he's going to have to sit out the first five games of the season because he's being suspended? I just think it gives these kids that they know they they can still play the college season. They're going to do what they want in their final year and then leave and then go. I don't think that really helps this issue. Now you mentioned former some of the NFL players mentioned in that UM case. One of them being Antro Roll was uh, mentioned and he had uh, well kind of a no comment kind of a statement. Well let's hear what Antro Roll had to say about the situation. Right now to me it doesn't matter what's true or what's not true. Like um there's, there's nothing for me to comment on with this guy. I mean obviously you know he's on a on a rampage, you know, to, to cause a, uh, you know, havoc. And, you know, I'm just going to let him do his talking because obviously right now, to me, it's really irrelevant. And, um, you know, it don't concern me at this point. And, um, you know, I mean, I'll deal with it, you know, when the right time comes. The guy he's referring to is Nevin Shapiro, the man in the middle of all the this. The man uh, that he was wearing an Antro Roll jersey in that <laughs> he was. In that now <laughs> extremely popular uh, video uh, on but, but he's not relevant. Um, no, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> apparently, the tr what's true, isn't what, that, isn't what's that, true, and what's not doesn't matter. Isn't that's that, that's what, isn't that what most people have an issue? Is I don't think people really have an issue with the players getting hooked up to payments or the the yacht. I don't think that's the issue. I think people have a problem with the administration kind of endorsing this guy. I mean, there's that photo oh. where Donna, Donna Shalala is holding that check like she's excited. She's going to go shop, free shop. Publishers clearing. Right. Stuff, I mean, my whole know? thing is is how long this process went out. I mean, you, I mean, speaking of compliance directors, we know in 2007 Shapiro had a, a, a near fight, dragged down fight in the press box with Miami's compliance director because he wouldn't allow him access to the At the players. Virginia game yeah, last time. Yeah, the guy was trying game. to do yeah. his job, and he, and he was getting in a fight about that. <laughs> but, you know, this... That was a fun game. It drags out this long, and, you know, 
since 2002, how does it drag out this long? And it takes this guy from you know from prison right. trying to write everybody out. Now, obviously, the first thing Miami's going to want to do is smear the guy's character. Oh, he's a felon. You can't take his word for this. But then you look at all the work that you know, Robinson and uh, Wetzel did in the report, and it, you might as well just say, we did it. I'm sorry. Be like that Oregon guy and say, yeah, we smoked all the weed. It's gone, man. You know, Do something like that and just admit it and st- quit trying to do this garbage because nobody believes you. Now, the guy that everybody seems to, uh, the media seems to sympathize for is the new UM head coach, Al Golden, who uh, just did not even know this was coming when he took the job. He probably would have liked to have known. Um, Funny because the school knew it was coming. They knew it was coming. They just didn't bother to tell him. That was nice of them. Yeah, yeah. Share that. Classy. Let's hear from Al Golden on how to handle this situation here. Uh, kind of a messy situation, but Al is like, hey, we're going to move forward and uh, do what we can control. Clearly, uh, if there was uh, an infraction, uh, and there was errors made in judgment uh, by student athletes on our team, uh, then they'll be dealt with uh, by the university, uh, and, and uh, obviously in conjunction with the NCAA. And so that's that's where we're at right now. What's Al Golden thinking when he goes to we goes home? If I'm Al Golden, yeah. I, I get out of there like right now. Like see you. Like done. Out of there. Hopefully, hopefully for him because you know what I really do feel for him. Uh, that you know hopefully he gets out of there, uh, has a good year. And then maybe he's able to, you know, replace Joe Pa at Penn State. I don't know. I think that's well, I think been that's, his dream job. That's what yeah. people report. But doesn't so. this take he some of the pressure off? Doesn't this take some of the pressure off of him now? Because if he doesn't win, hey, he's got all these sanctions over, well, hovering over I him. I mean, there's nothing this year. So sure. Technically, there but there's be, distractions. Yeah. I mean, possibly 12 players who are on the current I, roster. I don't think they're going to be very good anyways. So the team? No. Oh, I disagree. We'll get into that next week. I, I do with the with those twelve players are going to be. Insane. Yeah, but I mean, how good is it? Like, I think it actually might help him because it gets rid of the quarterback. Sean Spence, Marcus Sportson, Ray Ray. Well, that's all their best players. players. I mean, no, for me, I would, I would get with my lawyer and say, I want my contract. Well, that's funny. Hank Goldberg asked Al Golding yesterday about does he have an opt out. He did not. He did not go into that detail. He says, I'm committed to rebuilding this and that. That's coach talk. I agree with you. I think he stays here a year or two. But see, now, if, if those 12 players get kicked off, I think that benefits him because now if people have no expectations. If he wins eight, nine games, he's looked like a genius. So I think he's got to market himself. Yeah, but he's got to do that. I mean, he's not winning I mean, eight, nine games a, without the those players. Is, there's a no-win situation here because they are going to lose scholarships. There's no oh, if, yeah. ands, or but. They're going to lose TV time. There's no way they're not going to get out of this unscathed. So if you're Al Gold and you're trying to go get some of the best athletes in Florida, come play for Miami. By the way, you're not going to be on TV. Uh, you know, we can't play in the postseason. We can't play in a bowl game. But please, still come play here. Uh, that's going to be an extremely tough sell. And uh, they're off, they're off to a bad s- step right off the bat when you talk about a trust relationship. They brought him into the situation and weren't honest and forthright with him. Now we know why um, the AD left Miami to go to Texas Tech. When he did, it, everybody's like, Kirby "Why Hulk the heck would you do that?" Now we now know we why. Don't. It just so happened the same time Frank Haith left it around the same exact time to Missouri. And boy, if you're and Missouri. Frank Haith's maybe dirtier than well, really anyone I'm, in there. Pictures of him in yeah. the club yeah. <laughs> with, with Devin Shapiro. Let, let me ask you this, guys, because we're going to go to break here soon. Uh, what do you think Miami gets? How much trouble are they in? Uh, can they survive this? You're talking about they're in a state that's very college football competitive. You've got to deal with Florida and Florida State. UCF and that even the, that other school in Tampa, USF, they're on the rise. This has to kill Miami almost, even if they don't get the death penalty. Well, did you agree? Everyone, agree? Everyone's talking how it's going to benefit Florida and Florida State, and, and, and that's true to an extent, but I think it's going to benefit the alma mater of you guys, UCF, and, yeah. and that school in Tampa you guys don't like the name. That's who it's going to benefit. Yeah. They're already starting to steal some recruits. I mean, talking about your quarterback, Jeff Godfrey, Miami wanted him. They're already taking some kids mm-hmm. now, and those maybe second-tier players in Dade that Al, Go- Al Golden was trying to load up on, Maybe they're coming up here to UCF now. I mean, help the David last time. Kelly's going to lock down Miami. Uh, you know, I, I it'll be interesting. I don't think they'll get the death penalty because no. the NCAA said they weren't going to do that. But depending on how many scholarships they lose, that's a virtual death penalty for Miami. Being a private right. school, no one from you know South Dade playing at Carroll City High School is going to fork out forty grand a year to go to Miami to play football. So right. I mean, this is. I mean, think about this. The last time Miami got in this much trouble and they were losing scholarship, this is when FSU benefited, and this is when they got into a big run because they were able to go down to Miami and get the guys they wanted, yeah. get the Deion Sanders. And then once Miami got back on their feet, nobody was taking recruits from down there. And then Miami had their big run. Now we know why they started having these. Uh, uh, the the things with it, uh, that and whatnot. So we'll see where this goes. But yeah, I think it benefits across the state and even down, uh, you know, Florida Atlantic, Florida International, because of where they are, 
they can still take guys that would never have sniffed those campuses yeah. because they're still going to be on television. If UCF and, and USF are getting some of these better kids, then maybe FAU and FIU are going to start getting those UCF and USF kids. Mm -hmm. F FIU, of course, with Mario Cristobal. FAU, Howard Snellenberger opening a new stadium his last year. Could it be Mike Leach, Carson Ingles? Pre they're going to have Mike Leach. That could be big for FAU. That could be big. That's if you're Miami, you got to throw. You, I think you almost have to throw men's basketball under the bus. You mentioned it. I think they're I, I big. I do. I think they need to make men's yeah. basketball the scapegoat because who really cares about men's basketball? basketball in Miami. It's never been a yeah. uh, notable program, right. so that, that's what I would do. I agree. We'll I don't think it's enough of a sacrificial Jim Laranaga man. Jim Laranaga is an old man. you know. Jim Laranaga, how do you think he's feeling today? Terrible. As bad as worse. Golden or worse. Because at least Golden, I think, will get a good job regardless. Right. But Jim Laranaga is, what, 62, 63? Yeah, and he left George I mean, Mason. was a good like yeah. his last job. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, College athletics, boys. Uh, we'll see what happens with the University of Miami in that situation. Uh, we all agree, no death penalty. I don't think no, so. No, but a strong, a hit. virtual yeah. death penalty with yeah. the scholarship. Well, as, as close as you can get, maybe. Probably. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will preview the 2011 Florida State Seminole season. We'll have Brandon Millor from Seminoles.com on. You're listening to ESPN1080.com Insider Show on ESPN1080, the team. The Golf Insiders, America's number one award-winning talk radio show, is back, bringing you the inside scoop on all things golf. Tune into The Golf Insiders every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. on ESPN 1080 The Team. Get the latest on the PGA Tour, product reviews, and more from America's number one reporters, Inside the Ropes, exclusively on The Golf Insiders. The Golf Insiders, intelligent golf talk, Wednesdays, 6 p.m., only on ESPN 1080 The Team. VH1's I Wanna Work For Diddy is the show People Magazine hails as a younger, cooler apprentice. Working for me is like a roller coaster ride. You have to be prepared for anything. In Touch Weekly raves, it's riveting. This is what it's like in the heat of battle, baby. And USA Today says it takes reality TV to a hyper level. We got five minutes to figure it out. I want this job. Let's get this done. Everybody up. Ah! Now you're embarrassing me. Though. I'm not everybody else. VH1's new show, I Wanna Work For Diddy, tonight at 9, 8 central, only on VH1. Wagner Thermal Quiet Brake Pads and Shoes. These brakes are used by more professional mechanics and gearheads hands down. Why? Because they're the best. Look, advanced auto parts can carry any kind of brakes they want. They've decided on these three things. One, to carry Wagner. Two, to offer them up for up to 30 bucks off with a mail-in rebate. Three, to extend the offer until October 18th. Save 15 bucks an axle on Wagner brakes until the 18th. Whatever you're working on, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. If you're self-employed or a small business owner, you know the importance of having reliable health insurance. That's exactly what the U.S. Health Group can provide you. They specialize in providing tailored health insurance options at competitive rates to the self-employed and small business owners. Call now and a licensed agent will come to you and explain your health insurance options. Call 800-719-8134. 800-719-8134. At U.S. Health Group, we'll give you a wide range of customizable options so you can be sure that your health insurance plan will suit you perfectly. Dependable and affordable plans are a free quote away. Call now. 800-719-8134. 800-719-8134. 800-719-8134. Insurance underwritten by Freedom Life Insurance Company of America and National Foundation Life Insurance Company. Not available in all states. Business owners of Orlando looking to improve your search engine placement? End the search with MyOrlandoDirectory.com. Have a story to tell, a product to sell, or an event to promote? MyOrlandoDirectory.com is the place. This innovative new site comes complete with tools to track your company's marketing program to compete and stay ahead in today's fast-paced business world. Reach over 5,000 business owners through visual and virtual tours. Learn more at MyOrlandoDirectory.com. That's MyOrlandoDirectory.com. Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome back to ESPN 1080, the team. As we're listening to the ESPN 1080.com. <laughs> I would have sang for you if you would have told me. I know. I wanted Mel to dance here. Yeah, yeah, I sing. Come on, go ahead. Not sing your album out of there. Come on, Andrew. Let's get a little cheap Osceola dance here. This is talk radio, not music. That's true. <laughs> actually, a notable note, my mom actually once dated cheap Osceola, so that should get me some credit in this segment. Only just All to right. get made fun of. <laughs> or that. Fuck. 
Welcome back. Uh, of course, this is ESPN 1080. We mentioned uh, Eric Lopez, your UCF insider. Andrew Melnick, your NBA Magic insider. But today he is an FSU fan, season ticket holder, alumni. Alum. Huh? He's got his alumni shirt on. That's very impressive. He's been showing it off. Jason Coletta, Rays, and MLB insider Carson Engel, just a UCF uh, oh, alum. Just Look at that. Just, you're so you, you, know. you are unbelievable when you put that Chris Wakey jersey It's the lack on. of air conditioning today. I think it's got all of us on edge. It's a little edgy. <laughs> and, uh, Buckman behind the uh, board, cool as customer as always, right? Cool as a pillow? Yeah, Buckman? except it's like 100 degrees yeah, in here. I don't think uh, anyone is cool as a pillow. Today. Going. <laughs> There's no air in the studio. I really don't find it that hot in here. Uh, it's fine, actually. You got a fan slam. Yeah, it's pretty so insufferable today. It is insufferable. So, yeah, so ESPN 10, of course, is your home for Florida State football this season. You can catch every snap on this station, Andrew. Uh, get to hear the great Gene Deckerhoff, along with William Floyd on the broadcast. Yes, and, who, uh, if you listen, he does a lot of cheering. Uh, that's Good. Right. Yeah. I love those kind of announcements. You like the homer uh, ism, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Brandon Miller, by the way, will be on that broadcast on the pregame. He'll join us in a little bit. Uh, you want to unveil the, the rankings now? Do you want to go into FSU? Since this is your team, Melnick, this uh, is the moment for here, right here. Well, how about, you know what, we'll, we'll go up through FSU uh, there you go. Si- since we've only got this a week left. This is the left. ESPN1080.com Insiders Top 25. Explain what uh, how we pull this off. Uh, we pulled everybody together and, you know, calculated very them up. Scientific. Uh, very scientific. Very professional, j- just like the, uh, the big wigs in the Mel- AP poll. Melnick's a professional guy. would expect nothing less. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so 15, Michi- we have Michigan State, 14, Notre Dame, 13, uh, Virginia Tech, one of only two ACC teams in the top 25, 12, uh, Texas A&M, 11, Nebraska, 10, Wisconsin, 9, South Carolina, 8, Andrew Luck and Stanford, 7, Oklahoma State, and 6 is Florida State. So a uh, very convenient. I like how like, Andrew Luck got a special mention in there. Like you just ran down the team. Is you the best? Sawasu? Come on, man. If you're the best player in the country, you get an extra mention. That's nice. That's nice. All right, so the and if you have an excellent first name. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Very good, Andrew. So speaking of that, Andrew, uh, the Seminoles, sixth in the poll. They, that's where they were in the AP poll yesterday. AP came poll came out yesterday. FSU number six in the nation as AP well. AP poll is ripping us off. Yes, they are. Well, I'm not surprised. They're media. They, they rip off other media. That's what they do. Uh, so the Seminoles are ranked sixth in the nation. High expectations, ACC favorites, Jimbo Fisher in his second year after a 10-win first season. Andrew, your thoughts uh, in the upcoming season? Well, they're going to be favored in 11 games. And, you know, if you count the ACC championship, they'll probably be favored in that game. So 12 out of 13 games, they're going to be the favorite. The schedule after that Oklahoma game in Week 3 sets up pretty well. I mean, they're at Clemson, they're at Florida, but those two teams should be kind of down. Their other tough games which there aren't too many in that conference, are at home. So it really sets up well for them to have a big year. I'm not sure if they're quite ready to be that top five team. I think that's probably closer to next year. But with their schedule, you could see them winning 10, 11 games and and maybe deserving to be ranked this high. I agree. I don't don't see how they don't win at least 10 games. When you look at the schedule, um, when you look at the returning talent, especially on both sides of the line, uh, it's definitely in their favor. I mean, I mean, for the ACC, I also think Virginia Tech's in really good shape. I think I, in the ranking there, since yeah, I wasn't part of that, about I'm going to criticize. I think Virginia Tech should be uh, around 10. I'm, I'm starting to think you're right looking at their schedule. They don't play a ranked team. No. Florida State in, that, in the <laughs> ACC championship, if that is the, a rematch of last year's, that'll be the first ranked team they play. You might as well book Virginia Tech versus Florida State for the ACC, uh, ACC title. I don't see it shaking a out any other way. collect guarantee. Oh, easily. I mean, when you look at the two schedules and you look at the talent on those two teams, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, you got eight returning starters on offense and eight on defense. And, I mean, that's what you look at. And, and as you mentioned, they're still young. Yeah. So I think that's the kind of team that just the sky's the limit for them. They may not reach what everyone's thinking in terms of potential, but at least they've got a shot at it. Let's talk about the quarterback. E.J. Manuel replacing first-round draft pick Christian Ponder. That's ridiculous. I still can't. Process that. <laughs> That's pretty blows uh, away there. But AJ Manuel Andrew steps in now, a guy who has started two bowl games, has won two bowl games, started an ACC championship game. So for a guy that quote doesn't have a lot of snaps under him, has a lot, has some experience. Talk about AJ Manuel. Yeah, he's been very, very uh, good when he's played. I mean, he's what four and one, I believe, or four and two as a yep. starter. I mean, some of those losses. Uh, you look at them, they lost to Florida the year before when Florida was absolutely stacked and they really had no business being in a game with them. And then he lost that ACC championship where they just played a better team for the attack. He really didn't play badly in that game. 
Uh, he led them to a bowl win, the sure. MVP of the Gator Bowl two years ago against West Virginia, and then you know, Christian Ponder was hurt, had a concussion, a bad arm, couldn't could barely play against South Carolina, went out, and E.J. Manuel had a big drive to, to save that game, too. So the guys played a, a ton of football, or just ball, as, as Jimbo Fisher likes to say. And E.J. Manuel says he liked those games will help him be the leader this year and being the starter, playing in those two bowl games and playing in the conference championship game. Says that it's going to really pay off for him this year. Well, this is you know the situation I think you want with E.J. Yep. Manuel because... He's a guy that you don't think about it, but he's got all this experience, bowl game experience, ACC championship experience. I mean, he's already played yeah. as a starter at the top level of college football. Yeah. It, it's a perfect situation if you're FSU and you're bringing in this guy who I think is better than Christian Ponder. I think he's going to lead that offense with a lot more confidence. So uh, it's it's great to see for them, and I think they're in a perfect situation with E.J. Manuel. Yeah, to go, to go back to the Bobby Bowden days, they said they always wanted a redshirt junior. As their quarterback, that's how they right. wanted to roll, and that's what they're going to have this year. Yeah, let's uh, let's hear from EJ himself on that story there. On uh, the agrees with Carson, thinks uh, you know, this, this experience from the past will help him this year. It's a great deal of confidence for me. You know that I can go out there and do it. You know, it's not going to be a huge shock or a huge eye opener for me. I'm going to embrace it and enjoy it every time you go out there and play. But I know I can do it. I know what you expect. The question I have for you, though, Andrew, is my my skepticism is. Who's he going to throw the ball to? There's not a dominant receiver there. You could argue Florida State has not had a dominant receiver there since Crafonso Fort. Kind of young. They lost Easterling to minor league baseball over the summer. Not a huge loss, but he was still a productive receiver. What's the what, what's the receivers look like to you? Well, their leading receiver was Burt Reed, and he gets a lot of uh, criticism, and rightfully so. Drops a lot of passes he shouldn't, but he's been a pretty good player, a pretty explosive player for him. And Willie Halstead is really the guy who came on late in the season, and you know Rodney Smith was was kind of the big red zone six six touchdown target. Uh, you know they they recruited the number one tight end in the country, Nick O'Leary. They're going to get try and get that position more involved in the offense. It's it's there's not going to be a dominant guy. I think it's going to be more collective, more of a group effort. I mean to me, what what stands out is the experience because you got Reed, you got Halstead, you got Rodney Smith, you, know, you got O'Leary, you've got Kelvin Benjamin. Still around, so you've got enough talent around there. It's not like the defense can key on any one guy. Sure, there's no one superstar, but there's a lot of talent there. And I think what's uh, really helps here: three returning starters on the offensive line, and that's really going to help that's because huge. you yeah. know you've got the experience that we've talked about with him coming in. You have the experience in receiver, and now you've got three starters on an offensive line that was already pretty good. That's, uh, that's, so that's really going to help him uh, get into the starting role this year. And that's what I was going to say. I mean, he's going to have time to throw the ball. This guy Andrew Datko, who they're talking about as like an All-American dude. He's 6'6", 300 pounds. I mean, unbelievable left tackle. I that, knew that, Carson would go with the South Florida guy. Did you? I didn't even know he was a South Florida oh, guy. A, so that was not bias in Say Thomas Aquinas. Really? Well, anyways, I mean, that's, Michael Irvin's alone. that's yep. a guy that, that kind of bolsters that offensive line with the three returning starters that you mentioned. And they've got a good ground game, too, that's got a little versatility to it as well. So I think... Maybe they don't have those standout guys outside of manual for him to get the ball to, but they've got a good collection of dudes that are going to sort of pick up the slack. If you've got a standout quarterback, you've got standout receivers. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, ESPN 1080, the team doc, uh, show here, ESPN1080.com insider. So this is our FSU preview. And, of course, we're now being joined by Seminoles.com's Brandon Meller. He is the Doke Insider. You can catch his writing every day on Seminoles.com. They even do a, a podcast. And uh, Brandon joins us now. Brandon, welcome. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate you coming on. Give me your thoughts. How's the practice going? You're there every day. What's Jimbo Fisher's uh, attitude right now? This is a different year than last year. Last year, kind of the low expectations. He was following a legend. This year, the expectations are through the roof. What's been uh, What's it been like over there in Tallahassee? Well, you said it best. I mean, they, you know, last year, no one really knew exactly what to expect from from Jimbo Fisher and his coaching staff. Well, you know, ten wins, a Chick Fil A bowl, and a state championship later, the expectations are through the roof and. And I think him and his staff understand that, and that's why the intensity and the, the tempo of practice every day has been uh, just been a real fast pace. And they know that uh, it's, it's this team's time to win right now. I mean, they got a you guys are just talking about him, a guy in EJ Manuel coming back to this is his first time entering fall camp as as a starter, but he's four and two overall uh, in his career, backing up Christian Ponder, and he's got two bowl games to his credit. So. Uh, they know they can win now. It's just getting the pieces lined up and getting everybody gelled together and getting ready for that September third opener. You know, speaking of those expectations, you know, I've seen I've seen the the offense. Somebody described the offense, the FSU offense, as the best offense in the ACC hands down. Is that something you agree with? Uh, I agree with that. If 
the offensive line uh, can get together. And, and so far this fall, the, the one theme has been that they've been real banged up on that line. And you're talking about a line that lost Rodney Hudson and Ryan McMahon in graduation. Those are two guys who have started four years each. I mean, that's eight years of experience you lost there. So they've had to replace both those guys. You know, Andrew Dacko's coming back. He's obviously the, the star on that line at left tackle. But, you know, these guys have been banged up all fall. I mean, they... You know, they've been getting after it. So you've seen a lot of these, you know, young freshmen, sophomores coming in, and they're trying to get, trying to get that line, uh, you know, as, as gelled and as good together as possible. But this team can only go as, as far as that group will allow them to go, and that means protecting protecting Manuel and, and opening holes for a, a stable, talented running back. One of their biggest problems, especially on defense last few years, have been size and depth on that line, and it looks like they're fixing those problems, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That that was uh, Coach Fisher's first thing. I think when he took over, he realized how FSU had really they recruited well for so long, but it just worked it worked itself out where the guys they were recruiting, you know, weren't the typical you know size guys for positions like D end and D tackle, and, and the depth uh, you know kind of fell short as well. I mean, but you know, I, I wrote something about it earlier this year. I mean, I think the average weight on the D line rose by about forty five pounds overall. I mean, just in a couple of years. And, and you, I mean, you got guys now who are playing the end and, and Brandon Jenkins and Bjorn Werner and Tank Carradine, who are the size of the D tackles from the past few seasons here at FSU. Uh, so they really have kind of upped the weight of these guys. They've got them in the weight room. Vic Valoria came over. Uh, he's a Jimbo Fisher guy. He's kind of revamped the whole weightlifting system at FSU. And you can really see it in these guys. And, and, and to tell them the depth is going to pick up from, you know, a couple of great recruiting classes. So they have the depth. And I don't think defense is going to be any concern at all this year for this team because they have so many guys they can plug in. Each of these guys that kind of has that quote unquote SEC, you know, size class them that, you know, Fisher brought over from LSU. You mentioned it a little bit there. FSU back to recruiting at an elite level. They bring in a Ballyhooed freshman class, uh, James Wilder Jr., among others. Well, what freshmen do you see that are going to contribute right away to this FSU team? Well, you know, I, I've, I've been watching freshmen, you know, real keenly uh, all fall. And one guy who he, he had a leg up on everybody because he got there in January, and that's another running back in Devontae Freeman. And he is very, very polished. He's from the Miami area. He's a very polished guy. He, you know, he obviously is benefiting from being there for all of spring practice. But you know, he picks up his blocks. I'd say he's probably the best blocking tailback already on the team. He's a true freshman. And then you mentioned James Walter Jr. too. These are two guys that, you know, they're going to play. Even though you got Chris Thompson and Ty Jones and Jermaine Thomas ahead of them, who are, you know, juniors and seniors, respectively, these are two true freshmen that will play. And, you know, and I've also been impressed by a guy who, he doesn't, he hasn't gotten the same pub as, as a guy like Kelvin Benjamin, who everybody's been talking about, the, the 6'6", 240-pound receiver. Uh, but the guy is Rashad Green, the other, the other freshman receiver. And he looks really good out there. Uh, I think he's a guy we'll see possibly on special teams, and, and he can get into rotation as well. All South Florida guys for Carson today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing is, you know, when Fisher came in, I mean, you, 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 he went on guys, guys like Mark Stoops, Eddie Grant, James Coley. These are all guys who specialize in that South Florida mm-hmm. recruiting, and, and they've really kind of put the, the priority on that particular part of the country, rightfully so. I mean, that's where the best athletes come from, and they've really done a fantastic job recruiting that area. And we're speaking with Brandon Meller, the Doke Insider on Seminoles.com. And that's a great point. South Florida, you talked about it. that's been a how that's been a huge factor in FSU kind of getting the talent back. Back when their heyday, Chuck Amato used to dominate that down south, especially when Miami had its issues down south. Here we go, deja vu, Miami's got some issues. Now FSU is kind of plucking away not only nationally, but down south Florida. It's such a big coup for them, and that's been a success. You mentioned that coaching staff that Jimbo Fisher has put together, team in sync, now a second year. Uh, what is they? What is their attitude as far as what did they learn from last year as a staff that they'll take into this year? You know, I think that the biggest thing that they they learned was that they all can work together real well. I mean, you talk about you know just just a guy like Greg Hudson, for instance, the linebackers coach came over. He was the defensive coordinator at East Carolina, so he left the defensive coordinator position to take a linebackers job. And you know, I think when that hire was made, everybody's like, "Well, is you know is he going to be able to?" You know, deal with working for another defensive coordinator and Mark Stoops, and how is Stoops going to do? You know, not coaching under his brother, and he's coming back to the state of Florida. He used to be a GA in Miami, and I think they proved right away they all work together real well, and they all kind of share that same that same vibe and that same goal, and 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 they all kind of have embraced the fact that this team, under Fisher's orders, is one voice. They all have one voice. It all goes through Coach Fisher. The assistants don't speak to the media. Um, they speak very briefly at media day. That's it all year. You won't hear from them at all. It, it all comes through Fisher. And, and you talk about a bunch of guys who are, are very talented and know what they're doing, but they've, they've accepted the role of letting him be 
that guy in charge and, and kind of just embracing his mentality, and I think it's going to benefit for the program as a whole. One of the things that stands out to me as you know, uh, researching this, it, it stuns me that FSU has not had a 1,000-yard rusher since war done in 1996. Is Chris Thompson going to be the guy that breaks that streak this year? Well, he has the talent to do so. I mean, you saw last year he, he almost got to 850 yards. He only started at six games, and he was a game-breaker. He had three rushes over 70 yards for touchdowns. I um, mean, he's a guy who can take it to the house any time. Having said that, I don't think he's going to do it, and, and not any knock on him. It's just because FSU is so deep at tailback. I mean, I mentioned the guys before. I mean, they have five running backs at wall play this year, and all of them could carry the load if they needed to. And then you talk about a guy in Lonnie Pryor at fullback who is from Okeechobee who came to FSU as one of the top running backs in the country, and they got him on campus and they said, hey, we could use you as an H-back kind of guy, kind of like what Jimbo Fisher used to do with Jacob Hester at LSU. And, He's going to embrace that role. So he can carry the ball as well. If you're talking about six guys who are going to get carries. And, and so I just, with, with, with only one football to go around, I just don't see somebody getting to 1,000 yards this year. When you hear Florida State nationally this year, it seems like the next word that follows everywhere you look is Oklahoma. They got slaughtered by them last year in Norman. Oklahoma's preseason number one in every poll you could see. Why would that game be different this year than it was last year? You know, Mark Stoops talked about that. You know, obviously it's a special connection for him with his brother being the head coach at, at Oklahoma. He talked a little bit about that at Media Day. And, you know, I, I don't think he appreciated so many questions about Oklahoma considering the fact that they have two games to play before them. But I think he also understood that this was going to be the only opportunity for media to kind of question him about that game. And, and yeah, there was no there was no question, that, especially defensively. FSU was not prepared in that game. They couldn't handle the hurry-up offense. You know, they couldn't get the right personnel on the field to, you know, Greg Reed and Xavier Rhodes turned out to be two very good cornerbacks together after that game. They just didn't look good. And, and, you know, he talked about that. He said, you know, we were not prepared. And, and this time, we will be. He's like, you'll notice that after that game, the FSU defense improved game by game by game and then capped off with a really nice uh, performance against Florida and then South Carolina and Chick fil Bowl. So I think they'll be more prepared this time. I, I do know they are not talking about Oklahoma unless they're asked about it. And, and even then, it's, it's short answers because they're trying to push home the point that now, Louisiana Monroe is objective number one on September 3rd. What, uh, what's the ceiling and what's the floor for this team? I mean, a lot of people are talking about national championship game aspirations. Do you think that FSU has what it takes there to get to New Orleans? Now, I, I, it's easy for me to say, yeah, I think they do. I mean, I see them every day, and I work in the building with these guys, and you know, I, I'd like to think that they have the capability to do so. But I, I think for this team, it all starts with reclaiming the ACC first. I think you have to do that first. And, and I mean, the fact that FSU hasn't won an ACC championship since 2005 just kind of sounds strange when you say it and you think about it. And, and I think that you know, these guys, especially the coaching staff, I think that you know, they take it to heart that Virginia Tech is considered the class of the ACC now. And I think that. You know, if you really is focused on accomplishing, you know, locking up your own league first and then pursuing that championship. If, if, you know, if it works out and they win the ACC championship and they're going to the Orange Bowl, I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic season. And, and I'm not saying they're not studying for national championship, but this is really a, a, a step-by-step oriented program, and, and I don't think they're looking too far ahead. But do they have the talent to win a national championship? Absolutely. But you, I mean, we saw, you know, you always see it. It has to come together nicely. Everything has to be joined physically. And, there's still some questions uh, as the defensive side of the ball, obviously you have a lot of depth on the defensive line. You're returning the entire secondary. Uh, but in the middle, the linebackers, you only have one returning starter. What's the concern there to get uh, Nigel Bradham some help there? You know, I don't think that actually is a concern. And I say that because, you know, Kendall Smith and Mitch Alexander, who both graduated, were great players. But you're replacing them with a guy, I mean, who you all know very well from down in Orlando, Christian Jones, who has just been mm-hmm. lights out on the strong side. I mean, Coach Fisher raves about him anytime he's asked about him. I mean, even when he isn't, he'll single him out as being a guy to, to watch out. I mean, a 6'4", 240-pound kid who can run like the wind is, is doing really well on the strong side. And, and so I, don't, I, have, I think it's an upgrade overall. And that's, again, that's no knock on the previous guys. But, I mean, this is an all-world kind of linebacker talent who has the ability to do anything he wants. So he's got that side locked down. And then, uh, you know, they got uh, another Central Florida kid in Vince Williams um, who is – He's in a battle right now with Kelvin Smith for a middle linebacker job, but I think he'll he'll I think he'll wind up winning that job. So overall, I think they've upgraded the position. Uh, you, you got more speed and you got more size uh, at the linebacker spot. So I think Bradham, uh, I think Bradham should be able to do pretty well with that unit.
Brandon, last question before I let you go. The ACC, how do you see the ACC? Who's the biggest threat to FSU? Obviously, Virginia takes favorite in the other division. Everybody's projecting FSU, Va Tech. That's the obvious, but what do you see from the ACC? You know, I think about Clemson automatically. And, and we, we all know about Clemson and their ups and downs and how they don't necessarily win games. They should win a lot of times, but that's still a talented ball club. They recruit with the best teams in the country. I mean, they're always right there with, with FSU recruiting-wise. And FSU has to play them in Death Valley a week after they welcome the Sooners here. So that's, I mean, that right there is a challenge in of itself. You, you know, you have to go on that emotional high of, of either beating Oklahoma or you have to deal with the fact that you, you might have just lost the number one team in the country and then go play at Clemson. So I think Clemson is the biggest, the biggest conference, you know, hurdle that they need to cross this year. And if they can get past them, I don't see why there's, there's no reason they're not in Charlotte playing the, playing the Hokies. Brandon Miller from Seminoles.com, the Doke Insider. Brandon, tell the audience where they can find you. Uh, Seminoles.com, come check us out. We're doing uh, we're doing everything after practice. We're doing notebooks, video features, podcasts, uh, all kinds of stuff, just trying to really cater more and more to the FSU fans out there who want as much inside information as, as we can give them. And I'm out there every day, and Jimbo will only let me say so much, but I'm, I'm pushing it as far as <laughs> I can go to give, okay, to give everybody, everybody as, as much information as I can, and as much as he'll let me. And I appreciate everybody coming by to check us, check us out at Seminoles.com. Well, the important thing I want, Brandon, I want to make sure when Andrew, because Andrew is a season ticket holder, I want to make sure he's taken care of when he goes down to Tallahassee and checks out the nose. Okay, he's in a lot. Ab- absolutely. Hey, you just let me know what I can do, and I will, I will gladly help. I love, I love talking to you guys. And especially, I'm from Orlando, so it's a, it's a special, special uh, day for me to get to talk to you guys. Beautiful. Awesome. There you go, Andrew. See, you're taking care Thank of you, now. Brandon. All right, Brandon, take it easy, buddy. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it, guys. Talk to you next time. Brandon Miller joining us that here. That was good. That was cool. Uh, you love that, that huh? Good stuff. Yeah, he's my boy there. I've known him. Uh, we go way back. It's funny. We go back to uh, softball, actually, which is kind of a long story. It always ties It always does. Always All right. does. So here you go. You've heard the thoughts. Andrew, you are Mr. Seminole. Actually, we're gonna, you're going you're gonna to pick last since you are Mr. Seminole. Uh, guys, what is your prediction on Florida State this year? Jason, we'll start with you. 11-1 in a BCS bowl game, not a BCS title game. Ooh, Orange Bowl. I don't know where they go, but they're going yeah. to one of the BCS <laughs> okay. bowl games. It'd probably be the Orange Bowl. I'll, I'll go ten and two, and I also say they win the ACC. I got them ten wins, ACC, Orange Bowl. Huh? I'm ready. I, Get the shirt out. I got them. I uh, think eleven, maybe ten in the Orange Bowl. Eleven for sure, counting that uh, championship game. South Beach. Nice trip to South Beach, Andrew. Yeah, I enjoyed it last year going down for the Miami game. I wouldn't mind going back. I mean, to me, it all comes down to the Oklahoma game. I mean, the rest of the game, yeah, that's the absolutely. only one that I really have any pause with. And I'm, I'm, you know, after the way that game played out last year, I'm kind of leaning towards Oklahoma winning yeah, that. Outside gotta, of that, but they should win the rest of those games. I got a hard time picking them to beat Oklahoma right now. Of course, this is ESPN Tandy, the home of Florida State football. You can hear him here all year long as well as the Jimbo Fisher Let's Show. Dancing. He that's, is dancing. You know why he's dancing? Because his biggest fan is going to call in in the next segment and ask him a raise question. Mom? Oh. No, not, not family <laughs> related. We'll talk about that. And are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in trouble? As the phone goes dead. Maybe that's a symbol for Tampa that's Bay. That's not good. That can't be good for the for the Bucks. Those are the playoff folks. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> that's, they're dead. All right, you're listening to ESPN1080.com Insider Show on ESPN 1080 The Team. <laughs> It's the leaderboard, Monday, 6 to 8 on ESPN 1080 WHOO. This is where the pros come to talk. Hi, this is Boo Weekly. Hi, this is Jim Furyk. Hi, this is Rocco Media. Hi, this is Trevor Immelman. Hi, this is Zach Johnson. Hi, this is Woody Austin. Where the pros come to talk about their game, live from Celebration Town Tavern. Hi, this is Corey Pavin, the 2010 Ryder Cup captain. Listen to the leaderboard, Monday evening, 6 to 8 p.m., right here on ESPN. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Lang of Lang Eye Care and host the popular talk show, Ask the Doctor. I'm a board-certified optometric physician and certified nutritional specialist. For years, I've been telling you what is good for your eyes and entire body. Well, I've got something very exciting to share. Would you like to eat more organic and natural foods to protect the health and wellness of your family, but you just can't afford it or it's not convenient? Then we'll be happy to hear about the Green Polka Dot Box, America's first online membership club for organic and natural foods. For the first time ever, you can shop online and save up to 60% on all your favorite healthy food brands and fresh organic produce delivered to your door with free shipping. Go to greenpolkadotbox.com forward slash radio and find out how you can get a free club membership. Greenpolkadotbox.com forward slash radio offers organic and natural products at unnatural prices for those who don't like to pay retail for eating healthy. Go to greenpolkadotbox.com forward slash radio and save on all your organic foods. 
The next time you get behind the wheel, make sure your tires are road ready. I'm Brad Keselowski, driver of NASCAR's number 22 discount tire car. Proper tire care helps keep you and your family safe and can save you money. When your tires are properly inflated, you can save $0.08 cents a gallon at the pump, and that adds up fast. So be tire smart. Check your tire pressure every month and before long trips. For more tire safety tips, visit BeTireSmart.org. A message from the Rubber Manufacturers Association. Tune in Sunday mornings from 10 to 11 for the ESPN 1080.com Insider Show. The show covers all of your local sports teams, the UCF Knights, the Magic, and the Rays, plus all the top stories, scores, and inside sports. Want the inside scoop? Check out the Insider's articles by visiting ESPN 1080.com. That's the ESPN 1080.com Insider Show, Sundays from 10 to 11, only on ESPN 1080 The Team. Good choice, good choice there, Buckman. ESPN 1080. Livingcolor.com. <laughs> Insider we got, Show. We got Colette dancing again. This is called my senior year of high school, so Living I'm like, I know this. Song. <laughs> yes. what, what wrestling tie-in is this? Because I can tell by your and CM in Punk, friends, baby. Uh, CM Punk, Steve. This was Vic's choice, so yeah, you got it right on. Right they're doing the CM yeah, Punk. Yeah, it's so. a good choice. Good man right there. I like that. Living, can't go along with Living Color. So welcome back. We hope you enjoyed our Florida State preview. Reminder, next Sunday, our full college football preview. We all get to make our official picks of every conference, right, Andrew? And we unveil number five through number one, unless you check on the website right now, which you can find out. Yeah, it's actually been unveiled for a while, but if you're blind or something, just go to my next week. Check. <laughs> Uh, that was, wow, that was in, that note, that was the, in uh, good taste. No, yeah. real good. We're going to segue ruthless. right. That was Andrew Melnick. Can you uh, send them? Give them your email where they can send your hate mail to Andrew Melnick. Uh, Carson Engel <laughs> at ESPN1080.com. That's not even my email. Oh, that's brutal. Brutal. All right, we're gonna let's talk a little NFL. Speaking of brutal. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were brutal this past week against the Patriots there, Andrew, weren't they? You guys spanked them. It was so bad they blacked out the game. Is there a reason we have, I mean, like, they did well the week before, like, you know, no, what? Come on. They have a nice, a nice team. They're just, they're not quite there yet. That's, I would agree with that, actually. As a Bucks fan, like, they needed to make a few upgrades, yeah. you know, get a few veterans, just add to the depth on the offensive line, you know, yeah. stuff like that, and they didn't do any of that, and so... You know, I, they just could, kind of stuck with the status quo. Yeah. Obviously, because they had a good year, the schedule's tougher this year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I agree with that. I'm a little concerned about what we're going to actually see in the growth and the development. Secondary, I know, is a big question you have concerns well, about, right? you know what, the secondary, really not so much. I mean, right now you've got four guys there. You know, you've got to lead. We'll see what happens with him if the commissioner suspends him. Rondé Barber's getting up there. I think that's your main concern. That's but an they, understatement. Yeah. The 15th 30, year. 36 years old. He really isn't like that shutdown guy anymore. He can make some nice plays here and there. But they do like E.J. Biggers and Myron Lewis a lot. So the secondary is not a big a concern to me as I think the offensive line. And we saw it in that they, preseason yeah, they, game. New England didn't exactly have a big-time pass rush last right. year, and they dominated They were Bucks chasing line. around Josh Freeman, you know, You've got a second-year running back in LeGarrette Blunt, and you'd like to see him progress, but if you don't have a solid offensive line, it's going to be difficult for him to do that. Uh, the Jaguars played on Friday night against the Atlanta Falcons. Not the prettiest of games, and we still don't know who's going to be the number one receiver. Looks like Blaine Gabbard does out playing David Garrett. you got to make the move if you're Del Rio, right? Go to Gabbard? I think you have to. I mean, it could. the only problem is... If you take your lumps, uh, you know, Jack Del Rio's been close to being fired anyway. It yeah. looked like he was going to get fired midway through the season last year before they won a couple of games. You know, he hit the, hit the big field goal against Indianapolis uh, yeah. to, to kind of save his job. So if you play Blaine Gabbert, which you should do if you're the franchise, you take your lumps, you win five or six games, good chance you're out of a job. Uh, on the other hand, you play David Garrard, what's your ceiling? Nine wins, maybe? Let's just get the Blaine Gabbert to uh, Jamar Newsom connection going and have fun with it. <laughs> Wow! Listen, I mean, I, I'm always everyone always dogs on David Garrard. I'm normally a lot more kind to him than most. Yeah. But at this point, I mean, it's Jacksonville. Just play Blaine Gabbard. Who cares? Dolphins beat the Carolina Panthers. Reggie Bush running between the tackles. Chen Henney looked good. Do I have reason to be hoped, or am I just going to be? It's just just a letdown waiting to happen. 
I don't see reason for any NFL fan in Florida to get excited. That's yeah, I agree. If, I, no, if, maybe if you weren't playing in division with the Jets and the Patriots, well, listen, you'd be a little more excited. I think the key to your season is Reggie, Reggie Bush. We've never seen him as a number one back. Most people say his skill set's not right for it. He can't carry the load, but we haven't seen it. So I thought maybe in the smallest percentile, you give him that chance to be the feature back. Maybe he runs with it, literally. So... If he does well, I think that takes a lot of pressure off of Henny. I think Henny can be a caretaker quarterback. And so if that's the case, you might have a little bit there. You better hope Daniel Thomas is ready. <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. All right, so we got that's a, kind of a quick NFL roundup. We'll go more into NFL in the next couple of weeks. Charlie Bernstein will make his debut, I believe. We're going to try to get him, uh, what, Saber Day, September 4th? Uh, he told me he can do it whenever, so we... Let's do it well, September. Getting, we got my guy. Dolphins, yeah, go ahead, tell Andy him. Andy Kent from Dolphins.com is going to join us on September 4th. So. Beautiful. We're very official, official here. Really Dolphins.com, Seminoles.com. We're, 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 we're official. Fan. It's true. It's true. We run in good circles. We got some great uh, we got some great stuff to announce here on ESPN 1080. Uh, this week later, if you go to the website, of course, right now you can check out the website. You have the uh, my wide receivers preview. I'll have another UCF uh, position preview tomorrow. Uh, you find out tomorrow. Also, the top 25 rankings, insiders top 25 there, and also later this week. A UFC 134 preview, Carson. Promote it. We got a podcast. We, uh, we rocked it out. You, me, and Mr. Brian Winnegar are former great producer and MMA Keyword insider. Uh, we, we, did a, we did a good little podcast there and, and broke it down fight by fight on the main card. And this is a great card. You know, their first uh, trip to Rio de Janeiro and into Brazil since 1998. And Anderson Silva headlining the card, of course. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time, I think, for the UFC. They just think they're seven-year, $90 million contract with Fox. So there was a lot to talk about, and we sat down and, and broke it down, and a lot of good content there. And that podcast will be available on ESPN1080.com later this week. We're going to have some more podcasts throughout the year and different stuff. For example, a week from tomorrow, there will be a podcast previewing the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament with myself and the man on the line now, Wow, Tennis Insider, but more importantly, Jason Collette's biggest fan. Whoa, yeah, I Matt, have one. Matt Dunaway joining us. Matthew, welcome. Uh, good, uh, good, uh, good morning, boys. And uh, I will say this: you know, last week Carson talked about Adam Schick being his uh, favorite broadcaster in the state of Florida, outside of self. You know, alluded to the intro song that I heard. I'm going to go ahead and make a statement. Carson's my favorite fly girl. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> Boom's <laughs> not been a good day for Carson. <laughs> wow! Boom shot right there. Is. Gotta love it. Now, now, Matthew, you told you texted me as Buckman's on the floor. Um, you told me on the phone you want you had a question for your favorite insider, Jason Collette, MLB Rays insider, Matt Dunaway, of course, a St. Pete grad, a diehard Rays fan since a kid. Here he is. A Here's Saint your Pete moment. Grad? Those are the Rays. Saint Pete like City. Yeah, I'm, he's, what, I'm, yeah. I'm very. I'm saying. Am I crazy and holding out hope? I know they're eight games back, but seven of the last ten are against the Yankees. Is there a shot, Jason? Please, uh, all right, give let me, me some hope. <laughs> let me quantify it for you. So I, I said on Friday night, I went over and, and covered the game against the uh, Mariners. I said before that game, they raised up 40 games left. Um, and if you look at since the wild card came into play, 94 wins has been the magic number to get into the postseason. You cannot get in the postseason without 94 wins in the American League, which means the Rays would have to go 28-12 and 12 and play 700 baseball. For the rest of that time. Now that's controlling their own destiny. So far, they're two and zero. So now they have to go twenty six and twelve. The problem is, you need both the Red Sox and the Yankees to play below five hundred baseball. They need to go eighteen. Uh, neither of those teams could win more than eighteen games. So far, they're one and one. So for the rest of the way, you need Boston to go seventeen and twenty, and you want the Yankees to go seventeen and twenty one. Um, they rarely, over the last since 2008, have rarely played baseball that poorly. So there's a chance, but it's like Lloyd Christmas and Dumb and Dumber. It's a very, very, very small chance. Ouch. How do you feel, Matthew? Are you hurting by that? I mean, that's your favorite insider. It just broke the sad news to you. <laughs> you no, I mean, I, 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 we deal in the world of numbers, and, and that's what I like to hear. You know, you have to, you know, you have to be a realist in this thing. But I will say I was very excited about Jeremy Hellickson's performance last night. Oh, it looked great. I mean, uh, especially coming off the really bad performance against the Yankees where he couldn't locate his fastball. Last night, fastball was moving, and he got into the kitchen on a few guys. A few right-handed batters were, I mean, fastballs, he was throwing them over the middle of the plate, and they had so much arm side run, they were coming in on the hands. He got like five or six infield pop-ups uh, against that lineup last night. So that was good to see. Jeff Neiman's obviously been pitching very well. Uh, even on Friday night, Wade Davis made one mistake, uh, but the offense, for a change, came back and picked him up at home because the Rays' offense at home is 24th in baseball. Uh, 
I mean, you know, percentage wise, you know, the head to heads are still going to help, but you know, in baseball perspectives, gives the Rays a one and a half percent chance. Coolstandings.com gives the Rays a four uh, percent chance right now of making the postseason. So it's there, but you know, the key thing is for people to keep coming out and cheering the team all the way through 162. What's going to be unfortunate is they could win 90, 91 games and still not make the postseason. We need that second wild card in baseball. Well, absolutely, and I mean, from your standpoint, what are your thoughts if they win 90, 91 games and a team like Detroit gets in with 84, 85 wins? Uh, you, you hate it. It's the way it happens. Uh, but you know, baseball, maybe they'll get. They need to get the second. If they had the second wild card in right now. You'd have eight more teams in postseason contention at this point in the season. Right now, honestly, it's 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 pretty much down. Uh, the American League's pretty much settled, uh, unless something, uh, you know, some amazing drop off happens between the Yankees and the Red Sox, or both have ninety nine percent chance of making the postseason. I would really like to get that second wild card and get rid of the divisions and let the five best teams get in. Because if you put the Rays in the Central against that schedule, they might have ninety wins already. All right, Matthew. I know you. I know you could talk to Jason all day. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna ignore the fact that my my feelings and Carson's feelings, who know you personally for a long time. Yeah, he doesn't care about us. He does no. He's all about Jason and Andrew. Poor Andrew. He's just been ignored by Matthew. But Deal that's okay. with it. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, Matthew, we got thirty. Uh, give me. We got less than thirty seconds. We're gonna tease the U.S. Open preview next week. You and I will be doing the podcast. The biggest storyline is. Oh, it's Novak Djokovic. I mean, this guy is still amazing. He's only lost one match all year long. Uh, even though when he doesn't play his best, you saw it Friday against Gail Malfees. He was down a set. He was teetering. The old Djokovic would have crashed and burned, but Djokovic gutted it out one in three sets. And, you know, it should be interesting to see him play Andy Murray today in the final in Cincinnati on uh, ESPN. That's Cincinnati. Uh, yes, excuse me. Yeah, there you go. It's the same network. So that's Matt Dunaway. He'll be joining me next week for the tennis podcast on ESPN1080.com. Matthew, thank you for joining us. And I know Jason is very thankful that you joined. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> Not a problem. Thanks for having me. No problem. Matty Dunaway there. See, you learn that, you know, when you're in the kind of work that we are, the fans aren't really... It's, not really that I great. I'm just people no. calling and like criticizing me, saying my writing's bad or hey, I don't know what I'm talking about. So it's always nice to get the, uh, you know, somebody saying I like what you do. Good stuff. See, he's a big fan of yours. The <laughs> light, the hard race. So it's, uh, the race have been playing great though. It's been tremendous and fourteen we'll and six in our wow. last twenty, baby. That's right. So that's gonna do it from here. Again, next Sunday, big college football preview. We'll go in depth. We'll make our national title picks. Andrew's fired up. You you enjoyed the FSU show, Andrew? Yes. I know you did. Very much. That's Andrew Melnick, Magic and NBA Insider. I enjoyed the FSU show, which I did not expect. Carson Ingle, UCF Insider. Kim Kardashian Insider. Maybe not. I was the one at the wedding. Jason Collette, MLB Insider. Dave Buckman, great job. He's the best producer in the business. I'm Eric Lopez, UCF Insider. This has been another edition of ESPN1080.com Insider Show on ESPN1080, the team.